Welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out a two. I am your single host today. Not single as in uh, status, but single as in spirit. Uh, once again, we are bringing you our Smart Tank Revolution Essentials, which is um, a series where Donnie and I kind of go back and forth on um, pivotal wrestlers in the business and sometimes not so pivotal wrestlers, just people who have made an impact and reasons for them being on this, which would be considered essential. Keep in mind, always the opinions and um, you know feelings are of Smart Tank Revolution podcast ourselves. However, you'd be kind of foolish not to agree with us because um, it's right in the tagline, folks. We are the no. Uh, but yes, I am Joey Business. No long in moniker in, uh, introduction today. Uh, full of energy and coffee, fresh off a red-eye flight from Florida. Uh, yes, I was down in Orlando for WrestleMania weekend, even though WrestleMania was not in Orlando. But I did manage to catch some of it. However, we, we said there would be some curveballs in this series and you know we're not just going with the stone colds the rocks the triple h's and whatnot we're we're kind of going with our gut and and what ebbs and flows at the time so <laughs> my co-host mr wonderful while he edits this will probably be a little shocked but i think there's nothing no one more apropos to get us an essentials this week than yes the head of the table the one the tribal chief your tribal chief and mine, and the newly minted WWE undisputed universal champion, Roman Reigns. That's right, folks. Roman Reigns. Now, anyone who's listened to this podcast since its inception knows that it is the worst kept secret that I am such a humongous mark for this iteration of Roman Reigns. But what you wouldn't know is that I could barely stand him in the business at all up to this version of him. So I figured it'd be fitting to kind of bring you full circle from the Tribal Chief back to uh, his days in FCW. Um, and then you'll get my thoughts and opinions on all that. As always, it's subjective. But again, we know our subjects, so I, I think you should listen. But hey. That's one man's opinion. So let's let's get rolling on it. Let's uh, let's get to this and and uh, put it in perspective here. So there's a handy dandy, and I still haven't got it memorized. Rating criteria that we use in this series. Um, the first half of the series comes from Bret Hart's autobiography titled the, "My Real Life in the Cartoon World of Wrestling," and he does this rating scale based on three different attributes and cotton categories and the first one is wrestlers look then the second is promo ability and the third is in-ring work and they're interested in all the interesting um, caveats to all of them but they're all scored from the typical one to ten to one being the worst ten being the best and um, then we flip the script and it goes to our smart tank revolutions um, rating scale which is we have a little bit more dynamic uh, names and categories we have innovative effectiveness, classic matches, classic rivalries, and defining and redefining moments, which is my favorite. So, and we score them from one to five. Again, one being the worst, five being, you know, Meltzer, uh, driver, match of the universe. Um, so basically, let's go with Brett's scale. Number one, wrestler's look, scored from a one to 10. At first glance, when you see Roman Reigns, what do you think? Well. I'll tell you, it depends, because when you look at this iteration of Roman Reigns, he is absolutely incredible. And um, basically, there's really no comparison as far as I'm concerned. So, but we're not talking that. We're talking Roman Reigns as the composite, the whole thing, first glance. When you looked at Roman Reigns, so I guess I can answer it and I'll, I'll, my score will be composite, but my answer will be a little bit convoluted. Why wouldn't it be? So when I first looked at Roman Reigns, I, I followed Roman Reigns back in FCW days and um, he had a wrestler's look. Absolutely. I mean, my God, you looked at him and you're like, yeah, that's a wrestler. He had the long hair. He had, you know, the goatee. Um, he just had the build. He had that, you know, 
he, I didn't know he was Samoan at first, which is kind of funny. I mean, how wouldn't I know that? But he he just had the look. He had an intimidation factor. And then thus when he was repackaged into the shield, into the muscle of the shield, because he wasn't the architect and he wasn't the psycho that, uh, you know, well, the lunatic. Psycho such a derivative word. Um, oh, I'm sorry, disparaging word. Anyways, coffee is really crushing me today. Uh, and I'm running on fumes. But he had the look in all his iterations. When he was the badass shield with the flak jacket coming down through the crowd, whatnot, he had it. He had that look again. And then, of course, as his current iteration, as the tribal chief, the head of the table, the one, he just has it in spades. So... For wrestlers, look, if you look at him across all eras, like we did with Scott Hall, right? First a glance, is there any look of Roman Reigns that he's had that you wouldn't go, that's a wrestler, I buy him? I have to say no, but will I give him a perfect 10? I have to say no. I'm going to give him a 9, because I feel like even across all three looks, you buy him. He's Roman Reigns. He is, he is, he is, he got that wow factor to him. You know, and then when you go with the entrances, okay, he had a badass entrance in the shield with, you know, that, that the, the music, the, the bass, and he's coming through the crowd and just making his way. Just a silent ass kicker coming out. At least you prayed he was silent because at that point when he got on the mic, but I'm jumping ahead of myself, it was brutal. So, okay. I give him a nine because this current inception, when he comes down with, you know, either the gold glove or the gold wrist guard or the red wrist guard, whether he's in Jordans or, or J's or, or ones, or he's in, you know, whatever he has that wow factor, that slow methodical pacing walk brings such a reverence to his, um, his entrance. It, it just, it, it commands your attention. So, I have to give him a nine. I mean, there's nothing lower I could give him. I'd love to give him a perfect 10. If we were basing him on this current iteration of Roman Reigns, it'd be a 10 for the appearance and everything. But I'm giving him a nine. I feel like that's justified across all boards. And uh, my dog, as always, the Smart Tank Revolution mascot is chiming in. And so I apologize. I am keeping this in because he's just, you know, he's integral too. He has his thoughts on Roman Reigns as well. And he likes Roman. So, um... Yeah, so Russell's look, he gets a 9 on Bret Hart's skill. Promo ability. Here's an interesting one. Didn't hear much of him in FCW. Watched him work. He was a good worker. Um, Seth Rollins was definitely the standout of FCW. Hence why he became the inaugural um, NXT champion when they switched it over. But, so promo ability. Hmm. If we go pre-Paul Heyman, post-Paul Heyman... It's, it's really herky-jerky. Um, if we go pre-Paul Heyman, his, his promo ability is a four. It was atrocious. I mean, <laughs> some of the best times I've ever watched him, just out of sheer car crash mentality, was when he went against John Cena back, I think, in No Way, No, no Mercy, like 2016 or so. Um, their promos, John just lit them on fire. He torched them. And... The whole, you know, come on, big dog. You've got to know how to do this. It's a promo. Men can cut it. And, like, just smashing him. I think that really lit a fire under Roman because there was the one linchpin that I think the WWE Universe was having a trouble accepting because we've tried the Roman Reigns experiment multiple times for about 10 years now. And there's been no soft way to chew this because... You can't digest him when he's getting shoved down your throat. People rebel against that, myself included. You know, I'm like, don't shove him down my throat. He's not that great. Well, th when you're giving him, you know, the gosh, suffering, succotash lines and not letting him be himself, which is just a freaking badass Samoan ass kicker, yeah, you're going to have shit. So, you know, this version of Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman, his promo ability is pretty damn good, I feel. Is it stellar? No. But it doesn't need to be because he has Paul as the mouthpiece who might be the best promo of all time. The guy, the man can make you excited about, you know, a uh, coffee cup versus a broom. He's just incredible. I've said it many times. So he can sell you into the building, even if you're broke. 
Um, but pro mobility, let's just call Roman, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the two. He'd get a four pro, pre Paul Heyman. He'd get a seven post Paul Heyman. So nothing crazy, nothing stellar, nothing even to a level of a Cody Rhodes. But he's gotten much better because he's incorporated that sarcasm that is so obviously Joe and Noai in reality. He's incorporated that fun. When his promos against John Cena were amazing. Not because they were the best written, because they were so off the cuff and authentic it felt like. Even though WWE pretty much scripts everything, you felt that maybe they gave Roman the leeway here to just say, hey, let me do my thing. And it showed. So as a total, I'm going to give him a six. He's right in the middle. He's right in the middle. I'll give him a six. Okay. In ring work. There we go. This is interesting too. Because this has changed, but the fundamentals of Roman Reigns are still there. He's always been a big powerhouse guy who's had big moves, big bombastic, um, you know, finishes and, you know, the Superman punch, the spear, stuff that a lot of people use, right? Um, the drive-by is one of my favorite on the outside of the ring, on the apron, when he does the double kick. That's just such a badass move. So, you know, but he, is he a work, is he a work machine? In my view, no. You reserve people like that for like a, a Brian Danielson, a CM Punk, a Dolph Ziggler, a Kenny Omega, uh, a Cody Rhodes, a Seth Rollins, a um, you know a Darby Allen, a Chris Jericho, and MJ. Like all those people. Notice how I named a lot of AEW wrestlers. Yes, because I will say it right now. I feel like AEW has the superior in ring product, but they lack the pomp and circumstance, the gravitas of the WWE. And WrestleMania showed it. WrestleMania weekend, if you get a chance, folks, watch both parts. I thought night one was superior to night two. I even fully caught night two. I'm missing a couple matches, but from what I saw, um, night one was really impressive. But anyways, I digress. So his in-ring work. He's had some good matches. He's had some really good feuds, but he's they've carried Roman because he is he was falling into that stale paint by numbers type of attitude error championish mentality that we see with all the wrestlers like austin had it the rock had it that formulaic like oh here we go five moves of doom that's what Cena used to get you know railroaded for but roman had that kind of work ethic we're not work ethic work rate in the ring now since he's taken on this new character i don't know if it's because he feels so much more free or the levity of it his work rate seems to he seems to work up to whoever he's with. Kind of like how John Cena did when he had the US Open Challenge. Um, you know, people go, you can't wrestle. That's bullshit. John Cena can wrestle his ass off. So can Roman Reigns. Will I say he's up there with uh, Seth Rollins and a Cody Rhodes and an AJ Styles? Even an Edge? No, I will not. Or Brian Danielson? God, no. I will not say that. So, but I will say, you know, he's entertaining as hell. He's believable as hell. And the way to make it look good storyline wise he's very good at the psychology of what needs to be done at the time that's something a lot of wrestlers lack a lot of people can make it look like you know Dolph Ziggler for one one of my favorites by the way he looks like he's been shot out of a cannon when he sells like you know he's a THQ engine in a human life form Roman Reigns is really good at letting you see what you need to see like, if he's not going to have Finn Balor knock him around everywhere. But he's not going to undersell, you know, someone like a um, Brock Lesnar, obviously. And he didn't. So I, I feel like his work rate is good. I would give his in-ring work rate on a 1 to 10 based on Brett's scale. His later match has been really good. I mean, he had some stellar matches with uh, his cousins, the Usos, at the beginning of this Tribal Chief run. And he had a great WrestleMania run. And, uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed his match against Brock as well. Um, I'll, give him a, I'll give him a seven. Again, I'll give him a seven. You know, nothing super stellar, but above average, as he should be. He's a champ, and he's a long-reigning champ. So I'll give him a seven. I know some of these are surprising, and they're surprising myself, but I'm being honest. I have to. As much as a mark I am, i got to give the honest opinion here. I mean, again, it's subjective, but it's got to be grounded in some level of truth. Otherwise, it's just straight up fantasy and it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I give him a seven. 
Now let's switch from the into the smart tank scale, the innovative effectiveness scored from a one to a five. This means the ability to work as a baby face or a heel. Here we go. This was the biggest problem I had with Roman Reigns for the longest time. He was atrocious to deal with watching, you know, because when he was a face, he was so cookie cutter, white bread face, nothing special about him, just terrible, terrible. It was a very boring wrestler to watch, unfortunately. And now I'm seeing that it was because the character just didn't suit the man. It wasn't the man's ability to deliver. It was the ability of the creative team to match up with what would make this guy shine. And they just really screwed the pooch on him. Does he have the ability to bounce between a face and a heel? I'd say no. I'd say really not really. Not really. His work as a heel, I'll give him a five. Straight up five. His work as a face, I'll give him a one. A straight up one. So you're at both ends of the spectrum. However, innovative effectiveness means can you bounce between? I think he can't work other than a heel. And maybe I'll be proven wrong when he eventually goes face because that's what happens. When you have a long heel run, you eventually get so cool that the crowd gets behind you. Um, I don't know. For now, I'll give him I'll give him a two. I can't give him even in the middle because... His work as a face is so atrocious. It's just not believable. It's not authentic. So that's my point on that. Now, classic matches, classic rivalries, scored from one to five. Here we go, the highlight reel. He's got a lot of them in all iterations. Uh, you know, he had his wars with uh, then Daniel Bryan um, when he was, you know, his fast lane going into... WrestleMania against Daniel Bryan was spectacular. And his later work as the Tribal Chief against Daniel Bryan was wonderful too because they just gel so good. Whether Bryan's a heel or a face, they just gel really well. Um, he had his matches with, with uh, Cena. Not the No Mercy match. Their first go-round was pretty sloppy and terrible. Very underwhelming. However... His latest feud with Cena, where the Tribal Chief gimmick kicked in the high gear on um, last last year at SummerSlam when Brock came back, fantastic stuff, unbelievable. Um, you know his match with Cesaro, I would give it a five star at um, ba WrestleMania Backlash, which is so stupid it should be just called Backlash, but whatever. Um, yeah, I would give that. I mean, he's got a lot of them. Uh, He's got matches against AJ. He's got uh, matches against his cousin. Again, I said the Usos. Great stuff. Matches against Brock. Really good stuff. His matches against Seth were really good stuff. His matches against Taker, I will decline to say that was good stuff. Um, but he's got a lot. And I'm, I'm remember, I'm going off the head here. I'm not going through a library of matches. Because we don't prep on this show. This is for pros. We just go. So, um... Uh, classic matches, classic rivalries, I'll give him a four. I have to give him a four. Absolutely give him a four because, um, you know, he's not quite the best. He doesn't have quite the, high, the, the, the perfect highlight reel, but he's darn close. So I'll give him a four. Now, my favorite category to close out the Pierre de Resistance is defining and redefining moments. Scored from a one to a five. This is an interesting one. Because if you've listened to any of my essentials, you know how I kind of feel on this category. It's got to be something pretty damn big to really get me on a, a high scale here. Um, so let's go over some of his career-defining moments. He's main-evented six WrestleManias in a short career. Well, a short career spanning 10 years. Uh, you know, six. So over half he's main-evented. And not main evented when you say, oh, you're the main event in your Ronda Rousey underneath Austin and Owens, <laughs> which is so ridiculous. If um, you get a chance to look at that right placement, very glad that Ronda had to eat the crow on that one because who are you? You know, that's like saying to Bon, I mean, not to Bon Jovi, to, to Bruce Springsteen, hey, in Jersey, you're not going to go on last. I got somebody who's going to go on ahead of you. No, uh-uh. 
wrong. Okay, so anyways. Um, yeah, he's so many WrestleManias. He's won a Royal Rumble. He has won basically every championship with the... No, he's won the tag championship. So he's he's won all championships. He's done the gambit, the Royal Rumble, everything. He doesn't he hasn't won money in the bank. It's the only thing I believe he hasn't done. And then let's talk about it right now. He's on an unprecedented hurtling towards 600 days to smash that record. Well, he's already smashed Brock's record, which was the um, recent era reigning defending champion uh, amount of days. But Roman's already crushed that. He's going to crush this. And as spoiler, but it shouldn't have been a spoiler. I mean, it, it, you, you should have known. I mean, you go in knowing this. Listen, Roman has retained at WrestleMania again. Not broken up. Not won it and got it back. Straight through carried. WrestleMania, he was the final match. And he has unified the Universal and the WWE Championship. He did it with gusto. You know, he called his shot. He Babe Ruthed it. He said, I'm going to smash Brock Lesnar. Did just that in shocking fashion, too, because there was a lot of times during the match that I thought, okay, they're going to give it to Brock. They're going to give Roman a little bit of a well-deserved break because it's been a almost a two-plus-year uh, run as this character but no they, they kept they they kept the train going forward it's just steamrolling and um so he has unified the belts now which is incredible and it's pretty awesome so i'm you know to call it a redefining career moment it's tough because there have been unified champions before chris jericho randy orton um just to say a few and I never felt like those are like world altering moments. They were more like storyline altering moments. This one feels different. This one hits different, so to speak. Little Will Smith joke. Um, he He's done what no one's done. He's on an unprecedented run in the modern era. And when we say modern era, of the last 30 years, no one has done what Roman Reigns has done. No one. So... Career defining, redefining moments. How do you give him anything but a five? You gotta give him a five. If if I couldn't give him a five, I'd give him a four point five because I can't bring myself to give him a four. I gotta give him a five. It's it's an incredible run. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I know there's probably a lot of people in this day and age, we you know the uh, attention spans of goldfish that are just don't want to see something like this. I. As you know, on this show, Donnie and I are a very big fan of longevity for title holders. And this is this is the one. Other than Asuka, this is the one that's really hitting. It's going. It's running. And I don't see it stopping anytime soon because the biggest problem is with something like this is the Goldberg effect. When you build something up this massive, what is going to take it down? Is it going to be Cody Rhodes? I highly doubt it. Would I be upset? Time will tell. I mean, I want Cody to get his star to shine, but if you're going to tell me that everyone else can't beat Roman, he's going to? So I don't think so. And I've said it many, many times on this program. I think the only logical ending to this crusade of Roman Reigns is family. I think The Rock comes back at Mania next year, Hollywood. It's pretty much a done deal. And then we see the Titanic, you know, the biggest match of all time it will be billed for sure. How can it not be? So yeah, Roman gets a um, a five there. Uh, but he didn't score stellar everywhere else. But to me, that last category is the really the only one that counts. Because you can be the best worker. You can be the best talker. You can be the best everything, gimmick, whatever. If you're not in the business to make a defining moment, it's all about legacy. And I do not mean Cody and Ted. It is all about legacy. And Roman right now has one hell of a legacy. And I have been very excited watching it unfold. So that is my brainstormy, messy thoughts on our current reigning, defending WWE Unified 
universal champion Roman Reigns. And right now, ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or not, he is the one. That's all I got for you. Love to hear your thoughts. These are always a blast. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.